Welcome to Brushes with Paint. And I have some very special guests with me today, and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves because they are so special to me. And I'm gonna start with this young, beautiful person who's grown up before my eyes to introduce herself and tell a little something about you. Um, I'm Emily. Um, I, I like to organize and I have um, two birds and a lot of cats. <laughs> she loves animals, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love animals. And um, so that's kind of just, I don't know, I, I do like to organize a lot, so. Emily, what grade are you in? Oh, I'm in eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. eighth grade. Yeah. It's so wonderful to have you here because the very thing I'm going to share today involves during my childhood and maybe there's something you can relate to and share of your own testimony. And this wonderful person here, I'm Chrissy Weeders, Emily's mom, and I really enjoy artwork and I'm grateful to be here. Yes, and my first encounter with these two, um, besides church, was uh, Chrissy invited me to come to a face painting um, event that they were having at a church. And I'm like, hey, I'm not a visual artist. And she is so gifted as well as Emily. And there I was muddling through and I'm like, I'm gonna need your help because these people, these young people are coming up expecting beautiful art on their faces. And oh, that was something. But that's where our bond, I think, began to develop. Yes. And then I, um, I wanted to learn more about prayer and um, she's a fantastic prayer warrior and we met weekly for a while and it was just a huge blessing. You blessed me and uh, it's just that we pray together and there's strength in that. But with that, I want to open an unusual prayer because the story I have to do, uh, deal with today comes straight out of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21 and it says, speak to one another in Psalms, which is a song, hymns, songs, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, being subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. So can you imagine if every time we met, I'm like, the more we get together, together, we, I mean, we start singing, but it does something to encourage the spirit, just like when we got together and prayed and we had our Bible studies, it just brings a rejoice, a rejoicing in our hearts. But I want to open a little differently with a prayer, but it's going to be a song. And I'll start out. Lord, come Holy Spirit, we need thee. Come sweet spirit, we pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own special way. Now we know and we thank you, Lord, that you are with us. We have the Holy Spirit with us, but we're asking you to come and bring to our remembrance the things that you want us to share. We love you. We want to make sure we're speaking your words and sharing our testimonies that we bring you honor and we bring you glory. And for that, we ask this in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to share my testimony, and then I look forward to hearing your testimonies, which I don't know what you're sharing, and I never know what anyone's sharing on these segments. It's like our own little praise and Bible study. At the age of eight, um, I basically had several touches on, of the Lord in my life. Eight, my year eight on this earth was very significant in the Lord touching me. However, I will say that I didn't really know what it meant to follow Jesus. In my heart, I loved him, but I went on my way for years and years till about 22 before I really gave my life to him. And my maternal grandfather, Henry was his name, and he was saved and he gave his life to the Lord and he was on fire, like he was Pentecostal on fire, like, you know, and. He, once, uh, one time he says, hey, Robin, I'd like to take you to my church. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, okay. I mean, I love going to church a lot. But I said, Grandpa, there's this church I always go by, and it's down by where I lived, and my grandpa didn't live far from us at all. And I said, I want to go to that church. I'll go with you if you take me to that church. I'm like, I really had him because his 
because he was so on fire for the Lord, he wanted to make sure all his children and grandchildren came to the Lord. So he said, okay, I'll take you to that church. It happened to be the Salvation Army Church. And as you know, I have this, this is not their bell, but you know, you always see them out there ringing the bell, gathering donations to bless people around the world. Well, every time I would go by this church, before he had asked me this, I'd hear this singing and music and I loved music. I didn't hear it enough when I was young. And I heard percussion, which was unusual back in those days, you know, and, and uh, I'd hear this song. It was like an invitation to me. It was like calling me. And I was I want to go there, but it was a little further from my house. But sometimes we would walk that distance uh, with friends when I was little, and and I really wanted to go. It was like when you I was in Hawaii once, and there was this whole street full of restaurants, but the ones that had the food in the window that was sizzling and just drew you in. And that's the way when people worship and sing and praise God with music. It does something to me and it just moves me. So he agreed and he, we went that particular Sunday and, and uh, I don't even remember what the sermon was, but when they would sing and play the instruments, I was like in a different place. I felt something so sweet and so different in my spirit and I was moved at the age of eight. So children, you know, they're open to the Lord and, and you know, that's very important that we have the music of God playing. Well, the pastor gave an altar call and that doesn't always happen in all churches, right? And he gave an altar call and I just went forth as an eight year old child on my knees and I began to sob and cry. And honestly, I didn't even know why at the time, but I began to pray because I just felt at peace and at home in this environment. I'm, I need to be in churches where they're emoting, where they're really praising God. And yes, the balance of the word, but I need to have that open praise. And when I was there, a light filled my life. I, it was so real. It was not like the light you see in this studio, but it was the Holy Spirit. I was filled with the light from my head to my toes. And I just, I, I, I can't even explain it. It became, it became my first real touch of the Lord and he was making his presence known to me and he was slowly working in my life and eventually I did give my life to the Lord but it took some 20 years later and some heartache and some heartbreaks and and yet I didn't really know because no one really gave me the gospel message I didn't know what it really meant to be saved I just loved Jesus well with that it was such a wonderful experience I never forgot that light and so it was, a, I don't know, a couple days to a week later, my grandfather came and says, hey, Robin, you know what happened this Sunday? We went to Salvation Army and I'm like, yeah, I, I, this light filled me. You know, I wanted to share all that. He goes, a very unfortunate thing happened. He said, you know, it was the Lord that he had you, he used you to take me to that church because a gunman, which was very unusual in the 1960s, came into the church and shot people however i will say you know he didn't get into the details but you know and he said the lord protected us now you know i thought of the scripture years later when i was recounting this that you know we make plans but the lord directs our steps he says our steps are ordered by him so i'm grateful that he ordered my grandfather and my steps to be somewhere else when this evil touched that church however i am cognizant of even though we weren't there. There were believers who loved the Lord and he was just as present there at that church where they had to experience some heartache from this attack on them. Well, with that, I have to say that we need to rely on the daily guidance, protection, and trust that he is going to order our steps. And I always say, Lord, just guide me. Let me know where I'm supposed to go, where I'm not supposed to go. And and subsequent sharings of my testimony, I'll be sharing where God did that very thing. So this event was very special to me because I learned the power of music, that it draws you in, it's an invitation, it's, it brings you closer to the Lord. And I mean, I, there are different types and genres of, of music that may not do that, but we wanna put our mind on the ones that glorify God. So with that, I'm very grateful to the Lord that he used my grandfather to take me to that church and he and my grandfather because of his zeal for the lord was willing to forgo going to his own church and remember 
The word is a lamp, a light. And as we have it in us, we just, you know, we should be radiating that light. The Bible said, let your light, that's the word of God, shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify him. You know, and that would be our Lord Jesus Christ. So the light, when we do something good, people, and we don't give God the credit, people are going to say, you know, oh, that was a nice woman or that was a nice man. We need to let the word, that light go out. We need to be sharing that word. And I'm so thankful to God that he is our ultimate guide and he leads us, protects us and encourages us. Should we be in a situation where we are hurt or evil tries to attack us in any way, but we have a shield and a buckler. He is our strong tower. We can run to him and be safe. And with that, who would like to share their testimony? When you were, I gave them a copy of this and I have no clue what they're gonna share. Who would like to go first and share what you related to in this, this story? All right. Okay, Chrissy, I'll start. Um, I'd like to share a story that happened uh, when I was a Sparks director for Awana. And uh, so I was the leader of the group and um, for the ages, from kindergarten, first and second grade. And the, we would lead them through a session where they'd be in classrooms reciting the verses they memorized in their books. And then in story time where they heard about the Bible and uh, got to experience, we had a fantastic teacher who taught them um, a sequential, the sequential events of the Bible as history. And then we went to game time well, this night we had a girl who was present and she was out of control. Her parents, her mom had brought her just to have her be somewhere else, mm -hmm. be babysat. But she was literally out of control. She kept running out of the rooms in any setting. But we wanted to show God's love to her. Um, and we kept bringing her back and uh, we ended up getting one person assigned just to watch her. Hmm. Well, that person watched her and we made it okay through the evening and um, we're in game time. Uh, we were short someone that night, so she had to, the person who was watching her had to go and so then she was my charge and I'm um, trying to lead the group in the game we we're playing and she ran away again. Um, and I caught her before she got out and I'm like, God, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to help this child. Um, but just please help me keep going tonight. And I caught her a couple more times. And then while I was helping another child, she ran out and dashed into the bathroom. And, um, I ran to follow her. I was concerned about her being in the bathroom and I walked in and I'm in a quandary. She is in one of the stalls, locked the door. She locked it just as I came in. And I know that if I crawl underneath, she's gonna just crawl to another one. I can't unlock the door from the outside and I desperately need to get back to the game room. So I went to the door and I noticed that there was a gap between um, the door and the sidewall of the bathroom, it literally over an inch wide. I was able to easily slip my finger in and open the bathroom door, go in. She was very shocked and I got her <laughs> and we went back out and finished game time. And it was a little thing at the time. Uh, I just didn't even think much about it. And later that evening as I'm going to bed, I started thinking. I have been at that church over 13, 14 years by that time and used that bathroom very, very, very frequently. And there is no such gap in a bathroom door because I could easily see her. I mean, it's a wide gap and you wouldn't put that in a bathroom door. I started wondering about that. And uh, the following Sunday, went to church and I went straight to that bathroom to take a look at it. And there was absolutely no gap between the door and the wall. It was as just tight. You just shut the door and do it. 
And I, but I knew, I knew God had opened it wow. and he had um, met a need. Something that was very small for God, but huge for me for that night. And he cares about the little details yes, he does. in our lives. Yes. And um, he made a promise to me um, several years before that, that I'd be aware of his shepherding influence in my life. And I was. So I made this little uh, plaque at painting. Um, I just wanted something bright to remind me. And it says, God never made a promise that was too good to be true. That's really awesome. Could I see that? Mm -hmm. Now, how is, do you, did you follow this young uh, girl and how has she done, done so far? Do you know anything? No. Or was she just a... They didn't bring her back. And so we wish we could follow with her. But yes, she's not yes. But you never know the influence you had. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me um, of Jesus, you know, when it says he you know, went after the one that was lost. He left the 99 and he went after the one. It's like, you know, you're responsible for those children when you're teaching like that. But you're like, Lord, I'm trusting you. You know, you were cognizant that you didn't have much time and you went after the one. Yes. And I think that's interesting. So bring me back if I forget. I, I really thought uh, we'll be talking about songs and one of the old time billboard uh, songs that that was really popular it's not necessarily a christian song but it said runaway child running wild and i kind of relate to that <laughs> not i wasn't a wild child but i kind of did my own thing and she was doing her own thing and you know thank god that you went after the one mm -hmm. and he made a way where there seemingly is wasn't a way right so what else did you was that it okay emily i'm excited to hear what you have to share okay. um well there's been like several experiences where I've seen God work in my life, um, but I decided to share this one. Um, it was, it was, I had just had like a really long day and I was trying to go to bed and it was at night and uh, it was getting later, but I could not sleep. Like I was restless, I was just tossing and turning. So finally I, I got up and I just, I was walking through the kitchen, I, you know, just kind of doing the We'll open the fridge, look in, close <laughs> it, open the freezer, <laughs> close it, open the cabinet, and then close it, you know, and just kind of walk around. And so I was just, I was really tired and I had like a really bad headache and mm. I was just really like done with the day. I was like, okay, I, I just want to go to bed. I'm really done with this. And, and so I was just sitting on the bed and I was kind of, I was sitting on my, on the couch in the living room and I was just kind of like, I don't know, I was just kind of like talking to God a little bit. I was kind of yeah. like, I was like, well, if you're really here, how come I can never see you? And I, I rarely hear from you. Like, so are you really here? Are you really going to talk to me? Or or right. like, what? Am I still just alone? Because I was just feeling really hopeless yeah. and alone. Yeah. So I was just sitting there. I was just like, I wasn't saying anything out well, maybe I was. I yeah, yeah. Um, so I was just kind of sitting there, just kind of arguing a little bit, and uh, with God, and I was. It was just this like moment. It happened within like one second, but I was just like, "Are you really here? Because if you are, I haven't seen you. So why don't you just show yourself so that I can know that you're really there?" And I blinked, and in that half a second where I blinked, I just had this like really bright image of God's face, just went. And then I was just like, but it last. It felt like it lasted right, for right, a couple minutes. Right. And I was just like, <laughs> you're just a like, right? Like, Whoa! <laughs> and I just kind of saw that, and I was like, oh, okay, you're you're here. All right, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> like, okay. I was just did like, you have well. a peace when it happened, or did it frighten you a little bit? You saw the bright. Right, yeah, right. I saw it, and I was just like, I was a little bit startled, but then I was also felt like really more peaceful. And yes, yes. I was like, I was just like, oh, okay, well that just happened. I wasn't like, right. ah, like freaked right. out or anything. I was just kind of like, right. oh. <laughs> and so I just kind of, I just saw that happen. And I was just like, and I felt like I should go turn on some Christian music and lay down again. And so I did. So I went to my. My That's interesting. Christian music. I turned on some Christian music and I fell right to sleep. Wow. 
He makes our, there's a promise in the Bible, he makes our sleep sweet. And when you were talking, you know, and you said just in a moment, you know, like in a twinkling of an eye kind of thing, you saw the bright light and, and you had the image of the Lord. And you know what's interesting to me is Paul, remember he was he was going after the Christians. He was like basically thinking he was doing the right thing and he ended up writing most of the New Testament but under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But he basically on the road, he had an encounter with Jesus too. He is probably like all oh, these crazy, you know, Christians. They, you know, he was he was thinking he was doing God a favor. And he met Jesus with a blinding light that he couldn't see for a while until, you know, Ananias had prayed over him. But, you know, God does reveal himself. And he is light and you know he's the light of the world so that's awesome and what else and um Emily? well i was just thinking there was like when it happened like you know how your pupils will like fill up change when you see like, a bright mm -hmm. light mm -hmm. all the time like yeah they go right on well i kind of felt like that because it, it like happened and then i was like and then it was kind of like they, and i was looking at the room but it took a second for my eyes to readjust to wow. the because it kind of was like because the lights were off and like, I think there was just like uh, maybe a Christmas light that we had as decoration that was on or a small lamp. And it was just kind of like, and I had to like refocus my eyes so that I could see again. It was just like. Awesome. But so Emily, what do you think the Lord did for you there? I mean, how did that impact you? I, I get the story, but behind that, you always go back to that it, memory or what and I'm trying to get this question out but what did that do for you for maybe future restless nights um I think it just kind of gave me like a peace in knowing that God was there because I've seen him move before and it was kind of like like I've always believed in God but right. it was ha kind of having that like confirmation you know? right right I was kind of like because that doesn't just happen <laughs> right right you know on its own so I was it was just kind of like, whenever I think back to it, I'm, it's just kind of like a reconfirmation. I'm just like, no, he's, he's really here. Whenever I like question God, I'm like, you know, I can think back to that moment and right. be like, remember that night when God right. just like showed up. Wow. You know, Emily, in a lot of times we've been in Bible studies and Emily's always with us, like women's studies and She's just got a wisdom well beyond her years. And even when she was very young, she, I just love her spirit. And I know God has wonderful things in store for you because you have that hunger to know him. Most people, when they wake up and can't sleep, yeah, we do go in the refrigerator, we do open cabinets, but you were actually re trying to reason with the Lord. Like, I, I, need a, I need to see you, I need to feel you. And there are times like, yes, we have to walk by faith, but there are times that don't you cry out like, Lord, I just need to, I need an experience with you again. I need to feel your presence, even though I know you never leave or forsake. And, and I thought it was interesting that you began to play music and, and you let your mind think on the things that would bring you peace and that. And so with that, I, I, I was thinking about basically some of the, because at that Salvation Army, the very invitation was the music brings peace, it brings joy. And, and I was thinking of some scriptures that was interesting. It's, I didn't know what you were going to share, but in Zephaniah 317, it says the Lord your God is in your midst. He was right there. He's, and it says when two or more are gathered in his name, he's right here. Praise God. And it says he's a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. And I, I, I love to know that. Like, even when we messed up, we've tripped up, when our children make mistakes, we don't kick them out of the house usually and say, you know, hey, I don't love you because you made that mistake. No, we forgive and we love them and how much more God loves us. But he says, he will quiet you by his love. You, he answered your prayer. He kind of quiet, quieted you with that love because he answered your prayer. And then it says he will exalt over you with loud singing. And I love the thought of like, you know, I could be sleeping in ministers yet while we're still asleep. He sings over us, he dances over us. And you know, in that Salvation Army, that's what drew me. And we need to be sharing the testimonies. And we don't have to care what people think. We know the experience we had with the Lord, how real it was, you know how real that was. And, and we don't have to explain ourselves other than to share the good things of Jesus Christ. He says that we are to admonish one another in Colossians 3.16 with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs, 
in the spirit, singing to God with gratitude. So singing, we should be grateful. He's our rock. We need to also uh, proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish. We're, we, publish, you know, usually means write and distribute, but we're publishing right now through technology the great glorious deeds that he's done for us and tell everyone about the amazing things he's done because great is the Lord. And, you know, when we come together, we're supposed to have a song. We're supposed to, the Bible says in Corinthians 14, that we're, when we come together, have a song, have a hymn, have a word of instruction, a revelation, like you had a revelation, and you had a revelation, I've had revelations, a tongue, interpretation, everything must be done so the church is built up. And I just love that as long as I live, I'm going to sing before the Lord, and I'm going to sing thanks, sing praises, and I, I just praise God for that. So with that, the other day I was at uh, Headler's Mall, because uh, Emily, just before this taping, asked me where I got these. It's like a dictionary page, and they call it Pictionary, and it says, let your light so shine. And the, the artist will take a dictionary page and then put that in. You want to read that one? Um, refuse to sink. Refuse to sink. And you were calling out to Lord, Lord, I need some help here. And you called out, I need help. And we always need help from the Lord. But when I was at the Peddler's Mall, and I found this uh, Hits Throughout the Years songs, right? And the reason I bought it, I do play piano and, you know, I was playing, but there's a song in there that says it had to be you. And that's one of my mom and dad's favorite songs. Their other one is they tried to tell us we're too young because they got married very young. And I was practicing that song um, for a while because it just reminded me of a special song that was between my mom and dad. And you know, a lot of married couples and couples have that special song that's unique to them. Well, it's something that is a remembrance. It's a record basically uh, of something that was recorded and that's a homograph. And I gave each of you one of these note tablets that you can take with you and it's a record or you record. So you, it's a homograph is a word that you know uh, is spelled the same but pronounced differently. And I think it's fitting to know that the hits throughout the years, the famous hymns and psalms, we should know and we should be singing. So what I did is I made a little um, playlist and that, this is what, these were the songs on my heart just um, when I was making it actually this morning because I actually filmed two days ago and I was pretty tired yesterday. So, but these are my billboard top 10 gospel songs that came to mind today. And, uh, but I was thinking about even nature, even the creation of God, they make music and it shows here the crickets and the frogs and they're God's creatures, you know, are designed to make sounds. That's how we identify them. And we should be identified that when we sing, when we are, we should be drawing people because of our singing praises. And, but you know, God balances that though, because I, I ever so cognizant that let's say someone is grieving, going through something. I don't come up if you're grieving and start singing a song, you know, that that's joyous unless I feel so led. But the Bible says, you know, we have to be careful that we don't sing uh, songs to a sad or grievous heart. It would be like, you know, going out in winter with no coat on or vinegar on, you know, on in some kind of drink or whatever. But we definitely have to be careful to know. But in our homes, and I, I thought, okay, these are the songs that came to mind today in my top 10. So guess what, Emily? I'm going to be singing these throughout the week. I decided I'm going to make a playlist of my top. And I have here the old rugged cross. I love that. I have uh, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. And then I have just as I am, which we're going to play at the end of this, this um, show and um, this Bible study. And, and then I have Jesus loves me. That's a kid's song, but you know what? I love that. I sing that to my granddaughter when I watch her. And you say, that's a newer one, you by Lauren Daigle. And Victory in Jesus, Come Holy Spirit, I sang at the beginning. And um, I come to the garden alone. And we need to be doing that. We need to be talking to him like you did in the wee early um, night or early morning hours. And then I am a friend, with, uh, I am a friend of God. And uh, that's my list. And what was interesting is I have a record in here and I put on I put this in here on purpose because I had a jukebox and I have all these records, um, and it says Cloud Nine. And while I wasn't on a Cloud Nine, you know, I was I felt like I was in the cloud, the glory when that light filled me as a child. But on the back of this, and I never knew what you were going to share today, 
that's why I brought that up. On the back of this record, read what it says. Can you read it? Runaway child, running wild. And that was the little girl you described, but I know that the Lord can tame her and bring her to his kingdom. For me, I was a runaway child. Even though I had these experiences with the Lord, the light, the confirmations, the, the words, and I'm going to share subsequent things happen. I didn't accept the Lord until I was like 22. And so I was a runaway child in the Lord's eyes, but he had a hold on me. You know, I think there's a song like that as well. <laughs> I don't mean to be talking in song titles, but that's so true. So I'm grateful uh, to the Lord that he, he has songs that we could sing. And the Psalms, those are verses, those are songs. And, and there's a song of Moses and Hannah, you know, basically sang a song. And we, we just, I just appreciate the Lord for giving us that uh, venue to be able just to sing his praises and we need to be doing that more to encourage one another so with that um, I have had the ladies I gave them a canvas and this billboard I've given them a copy of, of, of a record here of these and they're gonna list their top five or ten uh, favorite songs at this point and to remember this is going to be a memento to remember that we are to sing praises to the Lord that we are to worship him and we're to speak to one another, encourage one another with songs, but keeping in mind that we don't sing uh, songs to a sad heart. We have to let the Holy Spirit lead us because that wouldn't be good. So they're gonna be making that in just a few moments. And I, I wanted to share that I have this little plaque and I got this years ago. Okay, Emily, you wanna read that? Um, yeah, life is song, love is music. Yes, life is a song and love is music. And you know, God, uh, when I think of heaven, you know, uh, the, the uh, angels and the 24 elders, they, they, they sing, you know, worthy is the lamb that was slain. And they sing that over and over again. And honestly, I gotta tell you something. When I was first saved, I'm like, I love you so much, Lord. But singing that 24 seven, like, that's, that's different. But I know when we see him, we'll have that joy unspeakable and full of glory and i'm just thankful that he will in fact cause that rejoicing and that singing to come forth because when we see heaven because right now we don't know what it's going to be like we have snip just little tidbits of what it, it you know from the bible when they describe it but we're going to um be thinking of that so with that i i found a song today that uh this won't come out till not next Friday but I found a song today and it was from you know uh, oldie but goodie Billy Graham led many people to, to the Lord with one of my top 10 favorite hits and it's just as I am just as I am so with that we're gonna listen to a little bit and then I'm going to uh, watch as the ladies and, and uh, you know make their little memento from the importance of knowing that the Lord has you in his heart he will use his Holy Spirit, and I have a little uh, chart right here. He will use the Holy Spirit to draw you to himself. And it says, when the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of truth, he has come, he will guide you into all truth. Like, he was guiding me, he was leading me, even though I didn't know it at the time. He, he rescued my grandfather and me, and I didn't know. A lot of times he rescues us, and we don't know that. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you the things that are to come. He will glorify me. This is Jesus talking. He will glorify me for he will take care of what is mine and declare it to you. And that's John 16, 7 through 14. I'm very grateful that we have the Holy Spirit. And I'm very grateful to both of you for coming. Just to know Never that whatever we go, stop. that's all right. That's all right. Stop. Just let it play. Let it play. You can start making your, your uh, things, you can just take it all there. See like this, you just put it in. These are the three titles on it, and then you can make it in the pen. Yes, we do, Lord. We can sing along. Should we sing along?
Lord. Aren't you glad he forgives our sins? Like, it's amazing. We do, but he doesn't. <laughs> Come for the lost, just like you went for that girl that was lost. So you had a little taste of the altar call song that Billy Graham would often use. And I want to say that that touches me and he touched me. I actually went to some of the tent revival meetings in Ohio, of some of these great evangelists. And when I was young again, the Lord touching me, but I never actually gave my heart. And it's important because Emily, when I was eight and younger, um, when I went to the altar, I only wished that someone would have explained to me how to be saved. I honestly didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I just knew I, I loved Jesus and I had that experience with the light, but no one took the time to say, you know, Robin, you're a sinner and you need to confess those sins and you need to believe that Jesus died for you personally and you need to confess that, and you need to confess that he is Lord and that he is risen, and you shall be saved. But no one told me, and, I, and it was like, it just, and, and they may have said it in the sermon, but you know, we don't always focus, right? Mm -hmm. So with that, dear brothers and sisters, I pray that um, I have this little blanket given to me from my neighbors, and I wanna cover myself in music because it is a way also that it says to sing spiritual songs that we can communicate to the Lord and to others. So as you see me covered in this, cover yourselves with a playlist of songs that will worship God and bring you joy, bring you peace and comfort in the days ahead. So with that, we say thank you for joining us and may God bless you and let us continue to sing songs of praise and worship of thanksgiving to our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But before we close, cannot forget, as oft as we eat, you know, he chose a common thing of eating and drinking, that we would remember him. So I have put, there's the bread represents his body, and we can, and we have the grape juice, and I'm going to give uh, a little bit to each person here. Here's for you. Thank you. And for you, Emily, and 
there's one for me as well. And let's take the bread. And I will always do this because as often as we eat or drink, we're to do this in remembrance of him. And it's very serious to me. We take this, I don't take this lightly that, may I have the scissors there? Yes. I don't take this lightly because, you know, Jesus, he paid the ultimate price, his life, and he willingly did it. Did you get it open? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, he said, he broke, he took the bread, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, he gave it for us, so let's partake, and we thank you, Jesus, that you gave your body for us. And after he gave the thanks, broke the bread, he also said, this is my cup of the new covenant, it is, represents his blood that he shed for us. Partake. And you know what? I want to end with one chorus that is a song of thanksgiving for what Jesus did. And remember, we're all sinners. The Bible said all have sinned in Romans. It says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You, me, and that Jesus spilled his blood, gave his life that we might have forgiveness of sin. And he rose again. He's not dead. He's alive. And he's coming back one day. And I pray to God that you would recognize that your need for a savior. And he's a wonderful savior. He's going to give you a better life. It may not be easy, but he'll give you a better life. And with that, we're going to do, there's one way to peace through the power of the cross. Ready? There's one, one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over me is love. There's one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over me is love. There's one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Have a blessed day, everyone.